This is a tech tip that we use whenever there's a complication of adding a film or a particular storyboard into the arabesque partition for DVD burning. This trick can be used on either Bogart SE or SE machines. Essentially what we're doing is going to make a scene of a whole storyboard that's having the problem, move it into the scene bin, and clipboard it into another project. Then this new project location might successfully add that film into arabesque. This trick can be used in a couple of situations. It might be successful if you're having problems where an ad film is freezing, if a film doesn't have sound once you add it into arabesque, if there's drop frames or flashes on the film once it's added into arabesque, or other oddities in a film, but it's not necessarily on the original storyboard. Here's the setup for this. It's pretty simple. What you'll want to do is go to the storyboard that's having the complication and go to the very first scene on the storyboard. In the scene bin, set yourself up to the very last clip in the scene bin. That way you know where the new scene layer is going to appear. Let's go over to one of the effects menus. This scene layering button can be found in either titling, image processing, or transitions. Any one of those. I usually like to go to image processing. Here you'll find the scene button. For those that aren't familiar with it, the scene button is one of the most powerful buttons in the Casablanca editor systems. Essentially what this does, it makes a layer of either an effect, effect in a scene, or maybe a particular set or sequence of scenes, if maybe even the whole storyboard, so it becomes a layer in your scene bin. It's a very powerful capability and then you can apply more filters and more effects to that scene you created in the scene bin. In this case, we're going to make a whole scene of the whole storyboard. So simply have the first scene in the storyboard selected, click on Scene, and we're going to use the button called Range. At this point you can name this scene if you want right now, or you can name it later in the scene bin. I'm going to go ahead and name it now and just call this our test clip. Now when I click on OK, I'm going to go into the Range menu, and you're going to find an In and an Out button in here and these are going to allow you to set the range of what you're going to select on the storyboard as your whole production or maybe a particular set of scenes. I'm setting the in for the very beginning of the storyboard and the out as you saw me scrolling through there to the very end of the storyboard. Once you've selected the portion you want, go ahead and click OK. Now we can go back to the edit menu. Here's our new scene layer. This is essentially a copy of the entire storyboard as one scene. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this scene over into a new project. Under Special, we're going to find the function called Clipboard. Clipboard allows us to share scenes between different projects. On Smart Edit machines, you'll see a slightly different clipboard if you're using Smart Edit 8 or below. The clipboard you're going to see here is going to be the one that you'll see on Smart Edit 9 or on Bogart SE. I'm going to click on Start Clipboard, and I'm going to go ahead and add this actual scene to the clipboard. Just simply just made a copy of that scene in the scene bin and moved it to this temporary memory. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and I'm going to close out of this menu. Now, let's go over here to the main menu and go into Project, and we're going to select an empty project. This is a brand new empty project. Make sure your format matches in this project what you had before. And I was using a standard definition project here, so this looks good. Now I'm going to go to the edit menu in this new project, and under special, I'm going to go right back into clipboard, and left click to check mark this particular scene. Now I can import it. And this scene is now going to be in my brand new project for me. So I hit OK, I hit OK, and here's our new project. So again, this is just a copy of the storyboard of the prior project that might have had trouble when it was being added into Arabesque. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main menu and go into Arabesque. And you might do this before you even come in and start making your scene in the clipboard. You might make sure that Arabesque is already empty and clear. So when I come in here, the first menu that defaults up, I'm going to click on Manually. And you'll want to go into this button here for Films, Chapter Menus. Make sure this is empty. If there's any other prior films here, you'll want to click on Remove Film and remove it. Because this is empty, I know I'm starting fresh, I can go ahead and add my film. 
So up here in Add Film, here's my project. It's already set to Project 3 and tells me my project length and I can confirm that's the same one. When I click OK in Arabesque 4, we basically already taken a pointer index of what that original storyboard was, but we haven't actually added the film. On Arabesque 3 and 2 for Smart Edit users, you'd already see your progress bar going across. So I'm going to come in here to the All button, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Create. And then what this will do, is this is going to start taking this new film and moving it into Arabesque. And again, this is what we're doing to get past complications that might have happened on the original storyboard when we tried to add or render this film into Arabesque. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for the purpose of this demo and then give you another tip. Now in all cases, when you add a film into Arabesque, if you're ready to burn it, I always recommend coming into the All button and using your Play Virtual Player here. That way when you hit Play, you can actually check your film as a virtual player and you can determine whether or not there's any problems with any kind of hits, flashes. You can see I've set up a really default menu here that I would correct and not use, but I can always left click to bring up the remote control and hit OK and play my film back. We're at Keystone now. So I can tell there that I've got audio and it's A-OK -okay, and I just right clicked back out of there a couple times. But I confirmed I got audio and it did add into the Arabesque OK and now I can write the DVD. If you did still have further problems with this film, there's a couple of extra steps you can take. Staying in this same project with this one layered clip, you might render a couple of extra steps. One is in the image processing filter. There's a filter in here called NOP, which is an abbreviation for no operator. Basically, it's a software testing tool used by development, which is not going to make any visual changes to your scene. However, over the years, we've found that this filter has actually helped stabilize or strengthen a scene without making any visual changes to it. It's a really useful little effect that you can put in here if you're having trouble with a scene that's adding into Arabesque. The other thing that we've seen in some cases that have helped out is adding a bunch of silent samples or a silent track under one of the, your music tracks. For instance, you could click one of these open music tracks here and simply put in a sample that's the equal length to your storyboard in here and make it muted. So let's say I'm going to come into Audio Record. I'll build a silent sample just so you can see this. And you could always do a scene sample for those that are familiar with that and mute that scene sample. That works too. But I'm just going to drop in a silent sample in here that has no sound and repeat it so I know it fills up the whole storyboard. For those that are having any audio complications, I'd recommend highlighting the original sample in the mix window and maybe dropping down the audio a couple of decibels. In many cases, if the audio is not appearing on an ad film into Arabesque, that's probably an overmodulation problem. Something happened when it encoded and copied that storyboard into Arabesque, maybe because the original audio sample was too loud. And this is a good way and easy way to make the whole storyboard drop down two volume levels or so if you wanted to. But this way we've got a couple of extra things to help you and that way when we go into Add Film it'll automatically render all of these together if I wanted. But now we've done the NOP filter, I've dropped down the overall volume a couple of dBs, and I've put on a little bass track of silence. We won't hear this sample at all, but that'll help. And you'll find that one of those steps is a really good solution to trying to get a film that may be having difficulty adding into Arabesque correctly to go in there successfully for you. So we hope this trick helps you out on any situations that you run into like that. Keep watching our YouTube page for additional tech tips like this one from Macrosystem US.